Anybody know who started promoting vinegar as being healthy for you? Paul Bragg, you know what he sold? Vinegar. Right? If someone says this is something you need and they happen to offer it to you, you have every right to be skeptical. Maybe he's just trying to sell something. Okay? It's not a miracle substance. It's a toxic poison that kills cells on contact. I wouldn't ever use it, personally. I don't think there's any benefit to it. There's no reason to use it. Um, so let's, let's go back to sauerkraut. First of all, people promote sauerkraut and similar products because of the natural probiotics. There are bacteria in these foods that, uh, fermented foods, that are supposedly good for us. And when I say they're supposedly good for us, what I mean is, I mean, clearly we need probiotics, we need these bacteria in our bodies, but the question is, do we need to be eating foods that contain them in order to get them? Okay, because that may sound like a silly question, but, you know, I'll, I'll give you an analogy. I remember years ago, I was driving through Washington, D.C., last mis listening to a radio program on uh, national public radio, the Diane Rehm Show. And they were talking about the problems associated with dairy products. And there, there was a well-known vegan advocate on the program who had written a book that was talking about why to avoid dairy products. And it's, you know, Washington, D.C. is a pretty well-educated market. There's a, this show had a lot of intelligent listeners. Um, and there was a caller, and, you know, most people are like, yeah, that makes sense. This caller calls in, a woman says, I agree with everything you're saying, but I'm pregnant and need to drink milk so I can make milk. Do cows drink milk to make milk? How about sheep? How about goats? How about any other mammal? And yet human beings, many of them believe, if you're pregnant and you're going to breastfeed, you have to be drinking milk. Okay. Well, there, there's nothing, we don't need to, we don't necessarily need to consume something in order to have it in our body. Okay. Because, the, I mean, the, the probiotics, yes, these bacteria, they're, they're, as I mentioned the other day, they're going to come from breast milk or they're going to come from our fruits and vegetables. But we don't necessarily need a concentrated source of them. And when we eat a concentrated source of them, we might actually create some issues. So I, I don't believe that for, in most cases it's necessary for us to do this. There may be cases, rare situations, where somebody is so out of balance, maybe they're going to benefit. But you still want to be really, really careful. People implant things like lactobacillus, acidophilus, and it's acidophilus. It's very acidic. And it's, I believe it throws the body out of balance most of the time because what happens is when we, when we allow the organism, the body, to do what it needs to do, it sets up the perfect environment. When we try to manipulate it into creating that environment, we often don't get it right. So we want to be careful. How many of you ever picked up a piece of fermented fruit? You didn't know it was fermented. You picked it up, you bit into it. What did you do? You spit it out. That's our natural reaction to fermented substances. Now, a long time ago, people realized, hey, we could ferment stuff, and it makes us forget our troubles. This is alcohol. Okay, fermentation creates alcohol. So, and alcohol is a cellular poison. So people feel good when they drink. They don't feel very good after the, the effects of drinking, but they feel good when they consume fermented products. But the taste is bad. And mo how many of you remember your first taste of beer? Did you like it? I was like, shit, I got to drink this? Because like my friend, you know, people wanted to drink this. I got to be cool and drink it too, right? It's like, this tastes like pee. I don't want to drink this. My strategy back then was to keep it as cold as possible. Because the colder it is, the less you taste. <laughs> 